The sim market on PC is alive and well, and with the release of Microsoft's latest flight simulator, there's been a smorgasbord of software and hardware products hitting the market. But finding or getting hold of some of these things has been about as hard as finding unicorn. What? So the honeycomb yoke really has had widespread availability problems during all of the pandemic. People have been at home, they've been wanting to game, they've not been able to go out. It, the story sort of tells itself. But I've managed to get hold of one of these yokes finally, and today we are going to do an in-depth review. And my first impressions of this yoke is it had a smaller footprint than I was expecting. Now I say this in a positive way. It doesn't take up anywhere near as much space on my desk as I was anticipating. And I have to say that the overall build quality is really very good. It's it's made of plastic, of course, like many of these products, but it's made of a very high premium feeling plastic. It's not covered in really tacky, shiny stuff. It's got a nice matted finish to it, and the unit feels really sturdy overall. There's nothing moving around, there's nothing creaking, and the shaft that connects the yoke into the main base of the unit really doesn't have very much movement, travel, or play at all. It's got that very characteristic honeycomb pattern there behind the yoke itself, which is subtly illuminated with some red LEDs. Those red LEDs have got different brightness settings. You can switch them off if you'd like. And it's got five individual levels of brightness uh, that you can adjust to your taste. Now, that's not hugely realistic. You don't find backlit honeycomb patterns in aircraft, but I do have to say that the aesthetic is uh, is very nice indeed. The real selling point of this yoke though for me is that it has a full 180 degrees rotation, and by that I mean it rotates fully 90 degrees to the left and fully 90 degrees to the right. Lots of the yokes uh, in other manufacturers' lineups, certainly those that are a bit cheaper, but indeed, some of which are many, many, many more times more expensive than this yoke, only rotate 45 degrees left and 45 degrees right. You would expect in a real aircraft a full deflection of 90 degrees left and right. And that prevents over-controlling the aircraft. With a yoke that only turns 45 degrees left, if you look in the sim, it will actually deflect the sim's yoke a full 90 degrees to the left. So you think you're putting in a small subtle amount of control and actually you're putting in far more. And sure, if you want to invest the time and the effort, I'm sure you can adjust this within the sim, but it's nice to see a more realistic deflection that's more accurately reflected uh, within the sim itself. The yoke feels really robust as you push it forwards and backwards. There's a really nice amount of resistance. It really makes you feel like you're pushing something that's controlling large, hefty control surfaces. And whilst it does have a spring that returns it to the middle, it does this quite quickly and it's quite nicely dampened. It doesn't rock backwards and forwards when you let control of the yoke. And when you twist the yoke left and right, it doesn't have quite that level of resistance and to an extent, not sure that you would expect it to. Um, but again, it feels really smooth and premium. And again, that lack of movement within the, uh, within the rod that connects the yoke to the base, that helps that movement just feel slick and smooth um, and really controlled, actually. It's got uh, a dual trim button on the left-hand side of the yoke, and you do have to deflect both of these buttons, either up or down, to adjust the trim in the aircraft. Again, that is what you would expect to see in many modern aircraft. And on the right-hand side, you've got a rudder trim, again, with dual activation buttons that you need to press both in order to adjust the trim. Both of those sets of buttons feel really robust. It feels really premium when you press those buttons, actually. Again, it feels like you're pressing on uh, a real device that's really controlling a real aircraft. It does also include three... Uh, momentary switches, and I think it is an eight-way hat. Disappointingly and somewhat surprisingly, these felt pretty cheap, actually. The wobble and the movement on them was pretty bad, particularly on the smaller momentary switches, but not exclusively, and the hat switch didn't feel as premium. And it actually felt 
out of place against all of the rest of the aesthetics and just how quality and premium the rest of the yoke uh, felt. So it would be good to see those improved. Also included on this yoke's a great switch panel. It includes slightly different buttons for things like the battery, uh, the alternator, the avionics, uh, etc. And then slightly different switches for the lights underneath. All of these felt really premium, robust, with a really satisfying uh, clunk, particularly for the avionics battery and alternator switches. The light switches are organized in the same order that you would find on a Cessna 172. That was really good to see. And when I was playing in VR, it was much easier to find the correct switch because I could look at the VR representation of the Cessna 172 dashboard and I could just feel across the switches using what I could see as a reference and I could get the right uh, landing switch on. It's also got a uh, rotary switch on the right hand side for starting the engine or selecting the magnetos, the left hand magnetos or right hand magnetos. Normally find this on the left hand side in an aircraft, but I'm not gonna make too much of a fuss. It's really nice to see this included on the yoke and for those of us that do this in VR, it's far less fumbling around in your setup to try and find the controls that you're looking for. It doesn't include throttle and the price point certainly higher than some other yokes you could find on the market around about the 249 dollar mark about the same in uk pounds 249 uh, pounds a bit less if you're lucky um, so arguably you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to dig deeper in your pockets because you will need a a throttle to go with this as well. Now you can mix and match between different providers. You can go with a Logitech slash Cytec throttle if you like. So don't feel obligated to go with the equally expensive Bravo throttle quadrant. You can settle for something uh, a little bit cheaper and perfectly adequate actually with the setup. It features the same mounting system on the top that you find on the Cytec yoke. So if you do have some of its panel lineup, whether that's the radio panel, the multi-panel, etc., you can attach that to this device. The same is also true on the Bravo throttle. So I think they've called it a universal mounting system for this device. Let's call it they copied the spacing pattern so that you could mount Logitech slash Cytec devices to it. But I think it's good that they've done that. Lots of people mix and match in their, in their sim rigs. Now let's talk about the mounting plate because I, I've really found with the Cytec one, the mounting of this to my desk has been quite pernickety. It comes with quite a, quite a cheap feeling uh, plastic mounting system. Actually, it's got quite a lot of flex and bend in it. This comes with a really nice set of metal clamps, two metal clamps included. The mounting plate actually is separate from the main unit and you use these metal mounting plates to mount the metal base plate uh, to the desk and then you slide the yoke onto that and effectively it's got two um, two wheels that spin at the back that lock it to that plate and it feels really robustly connected to that surface. Now if you've got a particularly thick desk and you uh, and you can't get the included clamps around that desk, they it does have a very, very sticky 3M pad included so you can effectively stick the plate to the uh, to the desk you can still release it. it's got a couple of tabs that you can pull up that push the plate off of the desk but if you can get the clamps around your desk and that's probably what i would recommend there's absolutely no need to use the clamps and the sticky pad at the same time the clamps are more than adequate so is this yoke worth your hard-earned cash 249 dollars slightly higher price point than some of its competitors. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say a very, very, very big yes. I really did notice the improved quality over the Logitech and Cytec yoke. And I'm not sitting here bowed mouthing the Logitech yoke. It's a perfectly good device. You'll have a perfectly good experience in that. But the, the premium feel, the 90 degree rotation in each direction, the lack of travel, on the uh, for the shaft inside the base, 
it really was very noticeable actually as I was flying and I did find the altogether more compact setup of having the uh, the switch panel behind the yoke really helpful in VR actually. Yes, this is definitely going to cost you more money. Should you upgrade if you've already got the Cytec Yoke, as I say, the Cytec Yoke is a perfectly good device. It's going to give you a perfectly good experience. But if you have got the cash and you're looking to improve some of your gear, it is a nice upgrade. And for those that are doing real-world training, I think it's going to give you something that's going to feel not entirely like, but slightly more like what you would find in a real aircraft. It's going to stop that over-control tendency. It's going to allow you to relax back and let the, uh, the aircraft really begin to uh, fly itself. So despite some fairly cheap feeling, wobbly, single push buttons and a not great hat, which I definitely think Honeycomb Aeronautical should improve. I'm actually going to go out on a limb. I'm going to break my tendency to give everything four out of five. And I'm going to give this five out of five stars. A really great product. Whilst it could be conceived of being a little bit pricey, I think for the quality and overall build of the device at this price point, really is pretty hard to beat. So there we go, guys. The Alpha Yoke from Honeycomb Aeronautical. As always, I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in my next one.